What will happen if a person with strep throat is not treated with antibiotics? <gasps> This fear of potentially devastating consequences is what drives us doctors to overdo it with antibiotics whenever we see a patient with any kind of pharyngitis, because it could potentially be strep throat, you know, even though most of the time it's viral and it doesn't have anything to do with streptococcal infections. The main reason why we overuse antibiotics is because we want to prevent potentially severe complications of strep throat. So let's take a look at what they are. Specifically, there are suppurative and non-suppurative complications. Suppurative complications imply that there is either a local or a systemic spread of infection from the pharynx to other structures. So locally, this could mean otitis media or peritonsillar abscess, maybe sinusitis, and all of these complications are very treatable. Not to mention that they are rare to begin with. Only a small percentage of patients with strep throat develop these complications. Then there are systemic suppurative complications like invasive disease in the broadest sense of the word, so sepsis or septococcal toxic shock syndrome or meningitis. We recently did have a surge in the cases of invasive streptococcal infections, but still percentage-wise, these were extremely rare. So whenever you have a patient with strep throat, instead of worrying about potential future complications, you should simply focus on their clinical presentation as it is right now and look for signs of severe disease. That's what I always say in every single one of my videos. You always look for complications, you always look for red flags, you always look for signs of sepsis or severe local complications of any infection, including strep throat. If there are no signs of severe disease, then you can relax. If your patient's symptoms are mild, even if it is strep throat, it's highly unlikely that your patient will end up with a life-threatening complication. Just make sure that your patient understands what to expect and that they know when to contact you or another medical professional if they notice that something is wrong. But if there is one thing that we fear even more than these suppurative complications, it's non-suppurative complications. And by that, I primarily mean acute rheumatic fever. We all remember from medical school that if you don't treat strep throat, your patient could get acute rheumatic fever, which is a severe immune-mediated disease that often affects the heart and it can lead to either death or severe disability. Now, acute rheumatic fever still is a huge global problem. Hundreds of thousands of children get sick every year. But what needs to be pointed out is that there is a huge variation between different parts of the world. So, in highly industrialized, developed countries, Acute rheumatic fever is now exceedingly rare. I've worked in the teaching hospital in Croatia for 12 years and I haven't seen a single case of acute rheumatic fever. It's the same in most of Europe and North America. On the other hand, in developing countries, the incidence of acute rheumatic fever is up to 100 times greater than in US, for example. To be completely precise, even in developed countries, there are certain areas and certain populations where rheumatic fever is significantly more common. But if you work in these areas, you probably already know about that. So, generally speaking, if you work in North America or Europe, it's highly unlikely that you will ever see a patient with acute rheumatic fever, no matter how many patients with acute pharyngitis you see every day. But now someone might say, Yes, the reason why we don't have rheumatic fever is because we treat everyone with antibiotics. And yes, antibiotics are a big reason why the incidence of rheumatic fever in developed countries is so low. But here's the catch. Antibiotics do not eliminate the risk of rheumatic fever completely in people with strep throat, I mean. They reduce the risk to about, let's say, a third. So... If antibiotics were the only thing protecting us from rheumatic fever, we would still have thousands of cases every year. So there have to be other reasons, in addition to antibiotics, why rheumatic fever is so uncommon today in developed countries. And some of these reasons are better living conditions, better hygiene, 
less crowding. Not to mention that the strains that are in circulation right now in North America and Europe appear to be less virulent and less prone to cause acute dramatic fever. All of this serves to illustrate that if you live in a low prevalence area, there is really no reason to obsess over rheumatic fever and to be paranoid and to overprescribe antibiotics. And there is another thing. Rheumatic fever is by far most common in the age groups between 5 and 15. So if you see a 40-year-old with a scratchy throat, there is no reason to rush in with antibiotics if you are not sure that it's strep. But if all of this is not enough, please take a look at the guidelines in the United States and Europe. And notice that even if you follow them to the letter, I mean perfectly, you will still miss certain patients with strep throat, mostly patients with very mild symptoms. Not to mention that some people with strep throat have such mild symptoms that they don't even seek medical attention and they never get antibiotics. And guess what? This is perfectly acceptable. But please don't take my word for it. Take a look at the British guidelines. And you will see that if the patient's symptoms are mild, they don't really care much whether it's strep throat or not because they know that strep throat is almost always a self-limited disease. If the patient's symptoms are severe and the clinical presentation fits strep throat, then you should prescribe antibiotics. This approach works. There is no microbiological proof, no swabs, nothing. So this is a stark contrast compared to American guidelines, right? Which are more oriented towards throat swabs and microbiological proof as the basis for further decisions regarding antibiotics. I'm not saying that American guidelines are wrong, no. I think that both ways are fine, but the fact that two different expert groups came to such different conclusions about the same disease illustrates the point that you don't have to obsess about catching every single patient with strep throat. If you miss some, if they don't have severe symptoms, if there are no red flags, this is perfectly fine. No harm will come to your patient. Just make sure that whenever you see a patient with pharyngitis or any kind of problem, that you take your time to examine them thoroughly and to look for signs of complications, for red flags, for signs of serious disease. I already did a video on this for sore throat, but my goal is to teach as many people as possible to recognize signs of serious infections in time. And this is why I created a free online course for clinicians, for people who work with patients with all sorts of infections. You can apply what you learn in this course right now, the very next shift. So if you haven't already, feel free to check it out. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.